Hip replacements are necessary after patients have failed conservative measures, and conservative measures typically include uh, anti-inflammatories, cortisone injections, a trial of therapy, or a home exercise program. And basically the types of symptoms that patients will come in is, is disabling pain. Um, I, I tell my patients that hip replacements or joint replacements in general are elective procedures. It's when it's interfering with your quality of life, the type of pain, and again have failed these conservative measures. So walking becomes difficult, the joint becomes stiff, you're having pain at rest, pain at night. Uh, when that comes into play, that's when I usually start recommending joint replacement surgery in particular. If it's groin type pain, a hip replacement. Partial hip replacements are typically utilized when a patient has sustained a fracture. We usually see this more in the elderly population. The hip you can think of is basically a ball in a socket. And when you have a fracture or a break in the bone, just below that ball in the neck region, um, it basically cuts off the blood supply and that ball will die. Um, so what we typically do in that instance is do a partial replacement where we replace that ball and we don't necessarily replace the cup. Um, when you have more arthritic changes that typically involve the ball as well as that cup, that's when we'll do a total hip replacement. This would be the liner or the new cup. And basically this component here would be the new ball. And here's the shaft, the portion that actually goes into the, uh, the femur itself. And this would basically be a new hip replacement here with a new ball, new socket. And it would rotate just as your normal hip did before it was arthritic. After surgery from a hip replacement, um, it's a fairly extensive course. Um, usually I tell my patients three to six months before you're feeling really good again. Um, the deep-seated bone pain that you probably had prior to surgery usually subsides fairly quickly. And then it's a matter of recovery from the soft tissues that were utilized to get down to that hip to do that replacement and building up the muscles and I, essentially teaching patients how to walk again because oftentimes there are gait abnormalities that develop as a result of that arthritic hip. So a lot of physical therapy is employed. Um, we give patients what do we call hip dislocation precautions as those soft tissues are healing. We don't want that hip or that ball to pop out of place. So usually for the first uh, several weeks, patients are up on a walker. Some patients can manage to get on crutches or a cane quicker than others, but it's basically tailored to that patient and how well they're progressing. Uh, most folks within six, eight weeks are walking under their own power. Um, and then it's just a matter of improving that gait, improving the strength in that leg. And usually within three to six months, most folks are very pleased with their outcome and are going back their, to their normal daily activities and hopefully better than they were before their surgery.